Greetings and welcome to Yarnspirations.com. In this video, we're going to take a look at the Lark's Foot Blanket. I'm seeing quite a bit of the Lark's Foot Stitch in all the fashionable items these days. It's a very easy stitch to learn and I'm going to show you how to do it right here. To make this blanket, you need three colors of Bernat Blanket. Now I have used the second recommended set of colorways, which was dark gray for my main color, cranberry for my color A, and vintage white for my color B. And you need three balls of each of those colors. You'll also need a crochet hook, size USL or 11, or eight millimeters, or size needed to obtain gauge. Now this is very easy to learn. It's a four row repeat and you just change the colors every two rows. And so let's dive right in and take a look at this really interesting stitch pattern. And it's reversible. So it's a terrific blanket to lay under because it doesn't matter which side is up, it will look fabulous on either side. So let's dive right in. All right, I'm going to make a slightly smaller swatch than you will make, but following your instructions, and picking the color palette you want to use, you're going to chain 109. Double crochet in fourth chain from hook, and that's going to count as two double crochet. So let's find the fourth chain from hook. One, two, three, four. So I'm going to double crochet in the fourth chain from hook. And they're saying that counts as two double crochet because that is essentially the turning chain that's going to count as a double crochet and then there's the one that I just made. Then double crochet in next chain. And then we have our asterisk or star and it's going to be chain one, skip next chain, double crochet in each of next three chain and we're going to do that all the way across. So chain one, skip one chain, double crochet in each of next three. Now you may notice that I am working in the back or the bump of the chain because I like to start all of my crochet projects that way, but if you prefer to work in the front, that works too. I just think working in the back gives me a slightly more elastic beginning and I think it's neater, particularly if I'm going to go back later and seam it up or put an edging on it. So chain one, skip one chain, boy, <laughs> little fiddly to see in this yarn because it's very, very fluffy. Oops, I forgot my yarn over after all that. I was so busy looking for the chain, I forgot the yarn over for the double crochet. One, two, three, chain one, skip one, Skip one. You know what, that one's a little loose. I'm gonna try that again. I will say with the blanket yarn, as thick as it is, I have noticed that after I'm stitching with it for a few minutes, my uh, gauge will settle down. It takes me a minute, I have to say, when I start stitching with it to uh, get in the groove just because it is so thick and fluffy, but oh my goodness, because it is so thick and fluffy, the finished products are just luscious and you can work your projects up incredibly quickly.
Okay, we're coming up on the end. So we're going to end with a full repeat, which is chain one, skip one chain, double crochet in each of next three chains. And this is the dark gray. I'm using the second recommended color palette. So here's what we have. These uh, little sequences of three doubles with a chain space in between. So that's the end of the first row. And we're going to turn. Now it doesn't say to change colors, so I'm not going to. When it's time to change color, the pattern will let you know. So this is my second row, which is a right side row. I'm going to chain three, double crochet in each of next two. So that means that that chain three is going to be on top of that first stitch. That's going to replace that first stitch. And then I'm going to double crochet in each of the next two. Whoops. All right. There's my second one of the two. Chain one, skip next chain one space, double crochet in each of next three. And we're gonna repeat that to the end. So what's happening is we are lining up the chain spaces on top of each other. So chain space over the chain space and double crochets in the double crochets. Let me see if I can pull up quite a bit of yarn. That's the other thing with a yarn this thick is you uh, you have to you go through it very quickly. You have to pull quite a bit out of the skein. See what I'm saying with the Chain spaces lining up on top of each other. Okay, and we're coming up on those last three stitches. One, two, and the three is going to be on the top of that turning chain. Now, it says turn, and then, well, it says join A and turn. So what I like to do is do the last yarn over of the last stitch in the old color with the new color. And I'm not tying a knot or anything. I'm just going to pull up a fold maybe six to eight inches in from the end. I can weave that in later. So that's my last yarn over on my last double. So that's join A. A is cranberry in my colorway and turn. So now we're on the third row and with A, because that's the color we just put on, chain four, which counts as double crochet and a chain one, skip next double, double and next double, yarn over hook and draw up a loop in next chain one space two rows below. Yarn over hook, draw through two loops on hook twice and that's the long double crochet made double crochet in next double crochet, chain one. So let's take a look and see what that looks like. So we're going to chain four. I'm gonna move this out of the way. I think it's easier for you to see if you don't see the text underneath it. So one, two, three, four. 
Skip next double crochet. Double crochet in next double crochet. So that is the one before the chain one spaces we already have. Y-O-H, yarn over hook. Draw up a loop in next chain one space two rows below. So not the chain one space here, not this one, but this one all the way down here. Yarn over hook and draw through two loops on hook twice, one, two, and that is the long double crochet made. Now, I want you to take a look at the gauge or tension on this. I haven't pulled it so tight that it will squish up. I want it, I want the tops of the stitches to be even as I go across. So once again, you will get the hang of this stitch after you've made a couple, but do make sure that you don't pull it up so tight that it's, it's very squished and short. You want the tops of the stitches to line up all the way across. So that's the long double crochet. And then we're going to double crochet in the next double crochet, which is right there. Chain one. So skip the next double, double in the next double. And then we're going to do this long double crochet. So yarn over hook, not the chain one space immediately next, but all the way down. Pull it up through the stitches, but not too tight. Yarn over, pull through two twice. Double crochet in the next double crochet. So we're going to do that all the way across. And so essentially what's happening is we've mo we're moving these chain one spaces that we had over so that they are over the center of the three double crochets that were in little rows before. And we're going to do that all the way across. All the way down to the bottom. Pull up that loop, but not too tight. Yarn over, pull through two, twice. One of the things I like about this blanket is once you get the first couple of rows done and you can really see the pattern, it's very intuitive. It's only a one page pattern to begin with, but you're really not going to have to sit with it in your lap the whole time. Once you get those first few rows laid out, it's very intuitive to see where the stitch goes. Chain one, skip one, double crochet in the next. Then we're gonna make one of the long ones way down there. Pull it up, yarn over, pull through two twice. Keep an eye on it. Make sure that you are happy with the tension and that everything is laying flat. See, I think that one's a little loosey-goosey. I'm gonna try that one again. Yarn over, go all the way down. Pull up that loop, not too tight, but also not too loose. Double crochet in the next double, and then let's see. We've got one more full repeat. Chain one, skip one, double. Long double. Double. chain one, and then it says repeat from that asterisk, which we've been doing, to the last double, uh, last double crochet and double crochet in the top of that chain three. So you can see I finished my repeat. I have two left, one that's a real double and one that is the turning chain. So I had a chain one at the end of the repeat, skip that double and put a double in the top of that turning chain. and then turn the work. So that's the end of the third row. For the fourth row, we're still working in A because it did not ask us to chain color, change colors. Chain four, one, two, 
three, four, and once again, that counts as a double and a chain. Double crochet in each of next three stitches. One, two, three, chain one, skip the chain one space, double crochet in each of next three stitches. So we're setting up that second set of three double crochets. Remember how we did that with the first two rows? We had three doubles sitting on top of three doubles. We're doing the same thing again, except the three doubles are sitting on top of three stitches, the central of which happens to be that long double, but it's the same general idea. And we're gonna do that all the way across. Okay, we're coming up to the end of the fourth row. And then we come to this and we finish that last repeat. It has a uh, chain one, skip next chain one space, and you're going to double crochet in the third chain of the chain four, and that's because the first three counted as the double, and the fourth one was the chain one. So you're going to count one, two, three, up from the bottom. So there's my fourth one is over here. So one, two, three, that's where that final double crochet is going to go. And the fourth one is in here, and that creates that chain one space. Except I jumped the gun. <laughs> I need to change to color B before I turn. So once again, I'm going to just pull up six to eight inch fold in the yarn and just bring up the new color on the last yarn over of the last stitch in the old color. So that's the end of the fourth row. So now we are at the fifth row. We're going to chain three, one, two, three, do the long double crochet once again, two rows down. So not in the chain one space that we just made, but way down here. So that's yarn over hook, insert in the hole two rows below, Yarn over and pull up a loop, not too tight and not too loose. Yarn over, pull through two twice. And then we're going to double crochet in the next. Double crochet, chain one, skip one double crochet, double crochet in the next, double crochet, and that long double crochet again. Remember, not just below, but all the way down not too tight, not too loose. So what you can see is these long stitches are sort of staggering. We have the cranberry ones here, and now the, uh, the vintage white ones are sort of splitting the center. Once again, chain one, skip one double, double in the next double, and then the long one. And 
and then double in the next double. So it's the same mechanics over and over. It's just a matter of where you put the stitches. Okay, we're coming up on the end. Chain one, skip one, double crochet, long double crochet. And then double crochet in the third chain of that chain four. One, two, three. Okay, we're going to turn the work and we're still working in B. We're going to chain three, which counts as a stitch. Two, three, double crochet in each of next two. I know this is a little difficult to see because I'm using vintage white on the white background, but once again, the mechanics are the same. On the second row of any color, you are stacking up the double crochets on top of the doubles and the chain one spaces on top of the chain one spaces. And of course, you know that those chain one spaces have to stack up on top of each other so that you can put your long double crochet in there when the time comes. So you're going to continue working the stitch pattern, the third row through the sixth row. So it's three, four, five, six, three, four, five, six, three, four, five, six. But every two rows, you're going to change color. So it's main color A, B, and then back to the same main color A, B, main color A, B, main color A, B. And this will give you the staggered stitch pattern that we're looking for. Now, the next row that I do, I'm going to use that main color. Sometimes I like to float my working yarn up the side so I don't have a million ends to weave in. However, in this case, I would recommend cutting the yarn and weaving the ends in. And that is because this particular pattern does not have a fancy edging on it. The yarn is so thick and the pattern, I mean, the pattern is what it is. It doesn't need a big fancy edging on it. So because I do not want this yarn trailing up the side and hanging out, I think what I would like to do is cut the yarn and start with a new piece. Now, for the sake of simplicity, all I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to leave a much longer fold. I can cut the yarn later. If I had my scissors to hand, I would cut it, but they're not right here. So I'm just going to leave that amount. When I come back later, let's see if I can show you what I did here. I can cut it here and that gives me two ends to weave in, one down here and one up there. So we've gone back to the main color and we're going back to the third row. 
So we've turned the work and we're chaining four. Let's get that out of the way. One, two, three, four. Skip the next DC because a chain four counts as a double crochet and a chain one. Double crochet in the next double crochet. And then there's my two chain spaces right on top of each other. So there's my long double crochet. It's going to go right in there. So I'm just getting my additional ends out of the way so you can see the pattern. But this is what I was talking about with the long stitches staggering. So here's the first time I did the long stitches. And then the second time I did the long stitches. Now we're coming up on the third time that I'm doing the long stitches and they line up right on top of the first time. So they do just sort of bounce back and forth. They stagger. And that's all there is to it. You're just going to continue to repeat the third through the sixth rows and you're going to change colors every two rows and you're going to keep going until the work measures approximately 58 inches or 147 and a half centimeters from the very beginning and make sure you end with the main color so that it is mirrored on both edges and off weave in your ends and you are finished this is a very quick project and you could make it in colors to go with any kind of room decor and it'll be very cozy to work on and even cozier to sit under when you're finished. So I hope you enjoyed joining us for the Lark's Foot Blanket and we look forward to hearing from you again here on Yarnspirations.com. Mm -hmm.